right. Okay. Hello and welcome to our first podcast. This this is called Campfire Talk. We are. This is the podcast of digital media, uh, the digital media program at Salford University. My name is Juan Hiriard. I am the program leader of this uh, digital media, and with me is Will Pickford. Is he's the final year student from uh, from this uh, course. Hi, hi, Will. Hello. Lovely to be here. Lovely to be a part of this. Yeah, well, you know, this is called Campfire Talks because we are pretending that we are doing a uh, camping in a very nice place. So that's why, as you see, we are we are not in lockdown. Uh, we are not in the university. We are in a nice place. We just uh, like yeah. the fire after like a big a big walk and we're having yeah. a nice conversation, right? That's, right. that's nice warm, for, warm for the fire. Nice and, you know, homely even. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So how are you doing, Will? I'm very good, thank you, Juan. Very, very good. Very busy, but very good. <laughs> well, that's just life at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you, I mean, I wanted to go back with you mm-hmm. like three, three years ago in time and ask and ask you why why you decided to study digital media? Why why not uh, why, why not being a lawyer or I don't know, I mean why 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 why? It's a good question. I mean, first of all, not not got the smarts for to be a lawyer as such but <laughs> the thing the reason why i went for digital media was more because of the 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 relationship i had with technology now i i didn't have the best well relationship with learning until technology came along and before i started you know getting into technology now i wasn't a designer at heart i hadn't done design before when i was at sixth form um i was more of a business mindset but when I when I was looking at the university options, you know, there was marketing and then there was digital. And the like the good thing about digital media was there was a nice balance in it. You know, it had these these long term aspects of, you know, creative technologies and, you know, r- real in- innovations and, and things like that. But at the start, you get the basics of design. And I, I just felt it was the perfect mix for someone who wanted to go into design. I didn't know I wanted to be where I am today or where I'm going but it, it's it's just putting yourself out there and I, I think I think it just kind of matched my personality my my sister's a very creative person I took a lot of influence from her and I, I always used to like the stuff that she did so I I, I thought maybe I should try that route and uh, go down it so it was it was a bit like uh a program that seemed to bring together different things that you were interested yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, right? definitely. Because I mean, in, in our course, there's there's more than just, you know, creative technologies even. It's how you're applying them even. So it's it, yeah, there's it just kind of brought all the, the things I wanted together into yeah. into one thing. Um but yeah, that's yeah. Well and now that you're finishing your your mm-hmm. program, uh do you do you do you have a, a clear idea of what what this digital media world is i i don't i honestly it's it's just ever growing i don't think anyone could tell you where it's going to be in the next 10 years we can tell you where it is now yeah but i don't at the the start i could never have told you that i'd even have done the things that i did do or i have done or i I will be doing i'm not sure where i'll even go after this if i'm honest i've 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 got a job lined up but I, i want to keep broadening my horizons and I want to explore different things as well so um yeah D- digital media is it's a very broad broad thing but I definitely have a, a much more solid understanding of it now I'm at university and now I've now I've been through the course brilliant well so you mentioned that you got you got a job so yeah that's that's a good story what how how that happened well I mean given the the current circum the current circumstances with um people's the unemployment rates after university I, I i've had it in my head as soon as i went to university I, it, it was in it was in the back of my mind you know i i really didn't want to to be fighting for jobs i want to be ahead of ahead of the curve if anything so i actually i, I went for a job early so i had and i didn't particularly push myself for a job at first but it was more the experience i wanted to yeah. to understand the workplace and the processes and more to find what i actually do want to do myself so, so I, I I pushed out. I think it was Christmas in second year, and I was pushing for work experience. Uh, and I went I went for a job at Stein IS, uh, which is a business to business marketing agency. 
And I was just looking for a bit of work experience in the summer. But due to COVID, because I've given our current circumstances, that wasn't wasn't possible. So um, yeah. it we knocked it on. But this is the good thing about the course that we're on. It there was We were able to accommodate that in the course. So coming into third year, I was able to bring the relationship with my work into my re- relationship with university. And um, yeah, it, it really worked together. And yeah, then, uh, that, that was yeah. a, that was a, a, such an experience. You go, well, you were working yeah. for one semester doing mm-hmm. a, a brief for them, so that yeah, in, in a way that gave you they gave you the opportunity to to be in contact with a professional environment for months, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I mean that that opportunity was it, it was the opportunity that I got to build relationships and yeah. even prove prove to them, you know my mindset and my passion and I think that's one of the main reasons why they wanted to bring me on board um and I'd, I'd say that about I'd, to to anybody that's listening that wants to go for these things I'd say push yourself and just show show your characteristics because that that's what they're buying into really they're not they're not bringing you into the company just because you're good at design like yeah. I wouldn't say I'm good at design I'd say I've got the right mentality and the right attitude it's how you approach these things and they can see that I'm obviously willing to learn. And I think that's probably the biggest thing. Um, but yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, well, that sounds great. I, one of the things that I, 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 I always mention from this is that you, 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 were, you, you weren't looking into finishing your, your degree, right? You were looking beyond your degree. You were in second, in second year, you were like thinking on what's coming afterwards and and you you started planning from there right exactly i mean this is the thing and a lot of things in life it's all it, you should always plan ahead you should always look to your future like there's got to be a purpose for going to uni you're not going to uni to, to get a degree some people do but personally to me i don't i don't feel that a degree is that valuable on its own it's more what you take with it it's what yeah. you where you want to apply that degree and you know it's actually what you what you're going to take from your degree and apply. Absolutely, and and can can you tell us a bit how how is your work? What what do you do in in your work at this point? So currently, I mean, you know, I'll talk I'll talk you through uni and how it's how it's developed. So in the through the first year, it was it was the more the basics and the the key elements of design. So we did a lot of. Um, a lot of basic design work, logo design. We were approaching briefs and doing posters. But then through second year, we started looking into how you bring it together through campaigns and how you bring in these creative technologies and how they apply in the bigger picture. And then now we've started, and me especially, have started looking at uh, technologies like virtual reality and augmented reality. And how, But it's not just that. It's more, like I've said previously, it's how you apply in them. Um, and that's a good thing about our university course. You you are applying a lot of these things to similar to real world situations. Right. I would like to show. I would yeah. like to show. I mean, uh, I know that you did a, a presentation yesterday where mm-hmm. you were working with a team looking into virtual reality, and I found that your presentation was quite cool. And I would like to show that, and, and maybe we can yeah. we can discuss it. Is that okay? Well, right, of so course. Will, Throw it up there. Let's see if I can I can make this work. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, looking here into your presentation that you did in a virtual reality environment, right? Yeah. So what is going on here? So the, this is a space which we've created for, well, the purpose is for a, a digital exhibition for a photography course. But we've used technologies such as Blender, Unity, and it's hosted on Altspace. Um, so through this, we wanted to showcase people's uh, work, but we've also wanted to allow these students to create the experiences that they would in a real exhibition. Because a real exhibition, you know, they use mood lighting and you know they use props such as like logs and all sorts. But you can't always. But, well, I think I feel it's slightly untouched to use this in virtual reality at the moment. So we we wanted to explore these technologies and see how you could create these experiences, but with the social capabilities that Alt Space pre- presents. So on screen, you can see some of the experiences created. 
um, which which are great. The lad, the my team, we did we did really well on this. Um, they had they went down and stripped it back to um, at, like the the core the core concepts of the uh, of their spaces, and then um, on top of that, we kind of built a whole system for how it would work and um, how the uni could even implement it to uh, to a course. So to give a bit of context you mm-hmm. the 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 team all the team that participated in this project actually yep. you you are there in this environment that you developed yep. um, we're wandering around exploring like uh, like you would in a an environment with your friends like a, a real ex- exhibition exactly um yeah it's something that how this is going do you think that this is going to change the way that we i don't know we socialize or we we do exhibitions or we what, what is the what will. is the future in, of this in the coming years, I, I I feel there's there's a need for a mix. The, there should be a merge of reality and virtual reality. Now, these spaces, what one of the ideas we mentioned as a possibility of creating these spaces was for the students to create them physically, so people so they could have a live exhibition, but also to use things, the technologies that we have, so 3D scanners and to, to bring the, the live environment into virtual um, with the freedom to explore. So uh, you, you have these 3D scanners and you can, if, you, if you're able to scan the spaces in high quality, you can render them into 3D softwares with all the textures and everything and then bring them into something like Altspace, which will allow you to have those social aspects. Um, and I, I think having that merge makes it much more accessible uh, for everyone because some people can't make it to live events or, yeah. you, you know, live events can't be held for months. They normally last a day or two. So it, it opens a lot more possibility in terms of growth as well for university to show uh, future students and bring them in. Um, so, yeah, there's there's definitely a whole untouched and undiscovered area which uh, i'm sure we'll be moving into in the next few years and do you think that because of of covid and and all the restrictions in place um it, the industry has got a, a lot more interested on on looking into it, this virtual into virtual reality definitely I, it's changing all the time and not not just in terms of exhibitions in terms of a, a, a lot of different markets and businesses uh, are really seeing the value in virtual reality now and these creative technologies for example surgeons now shadowing and watching from a box like they normally do to learn is very long and time consuming and it can obviously be dangerous if if they're not fully educated that someone's lives in their hand now bringing in something like virtual reality with with real talk like the the feel of real touch and um i I just feel it it takes that element of risk away and allows people to really learn more rapidly um it's the same in pharmaceuticals for example now in the a lot a a few of my family members work in pharmaceuticals so i actually i know a fair bit about this so in the sterile zones it, they normally do shadowing and this this process is still very dangerous they're the people most at risk to both the product and themselves now it's a very time consuming process where they just sit in a classroom and talk through it for months on end but if they're able to recreate these environments using virtual reality which a lot of the big pharmaceutical companies are now they're able to speed up the process dramatically like yeah. very very much so these technologies are being noticed everywhere and covid has definitely sped it up due to the social uh, the lack of social interactions right and now going back to three years yeah, ago yeah. when you were starting like this course <laughs> were you like yeah. uh, interested or you did you knew anything about this or was something that you just it, it, it was in the distance i i, I was always interested with it I, I used to read about technologies and it whenever I got my hands on them it was great but they're just so expensive back then because because it wasn't as accessible it it was it, it just looked in the distance but uni's allowed us to get our hands on these technologies and it's even pushed you in the right routes and it, it even motivates you to to research yourself and explore more and see what's out there so say say the oculus for example is very accessible now it's at a price where anyone can buy it 
years ago it it wasn't really um, as you know as a, a first year student you, you haven't got the most you know income but um yeah it's it, it's good to see it becoming more accessible and um it'll be good to see where that goes as well uh for sure and there right. is a piece of technology which which uni led me to um discover which is next mind which is um mind control and if we're, if we're going to talk about where things are going in the future i think that's we know we know about elon musk and monkeys and you know he, he's using the Neuralink. he's obviously pushing it a different way but there's already technologies out there which you can um link with your headsets and they actually read your brain waves for you to select items on screen yeah. um, and televisions have been linked with it so you can change the channel without even without even using a controller or anything so right so so now yeah. you say well is, well in, in a context that is constantly changing as you said with mm -hmm. new technologies racing all the time things that we cannot even imagine that's happening with artificial intelligence with data yeah. um exactly. uh, uh well so how do you think that uh a designer like you should be preparing for the future it, it's in my opinion, a lot of it is mindset. It's being willing to learn and being willing to adapt. And this is like a key thing with going into the workplace as well. So going into a, a new workplace, you, you've got to be willing to adapt to, you know, the the pace of the environment and, you know, even the people around you. You've got to you've got to suss people out and you've got to understand, you know, how they're learning and how they interact with people. Like some people like to get their head down and work. Uh, others like to, you know, communicate and work in a team. But it, it comes, yeah, coming, coming back to that, it's, um, oh, <laughs> yeah. It's, I, I, yeah, I'd say it is just your, your mentality. We, you've just got to be on top of, be on top of your research really. And I just, yeah, you've got to show your passion. I think that yeah. that's how a young designer should keep up with it. It's just I, adapting to your situations. I think that's the key, right? Is the key yeah. is uh, being being uh, embrace it because uh, mm. if, if you need to be the kind of person that is uh, is 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 waiting for change and and to interact and to do things that are new to you because otherwise you you you're you're left behind. Yeah. Well, it's similar to this, to how me wanting to get a job, you should try and be ahead of the curve. At the end yeah. of the day, like, you know, why why wait for it to come to you? You should, you know, be looking at it before it's even happening. Uh, you should be yeah. thinking, even conceiving, you know, ways that you can use these mind technologies, like how, what, what's the best use for that? What can that benefit? You know, all, yeah. all these little things, it's, it's always good to think ahead, definitely. Um, right. and being willing to being willing to learn that's the best yeah. bit that's you know you've got to enjoy learning you that's, why, that. that's why i'm you have that's to why enjoy I'm learning I, I enjoy technology yeah it's all, it's all about <laughs> having fun at the end i mean if you're not it, definitely fun, yeah. you've got to enjoy it yeah enjoy and I, it. As, as both as oculus owners we can both say we we very much enjoy it and we enjoy watching all these new things come out and these technologies evolve it's great yeah definitely so yeah, I think that we we can end with that mm. that that mm. phrase. It's like yeah, you have <laughs> you have to have fun because if you're not yeah. having fun, this is not definitely. the right path for you, yeah. right? Definitely, exactly. Right, you hit the nail on the head with a sledgehammer. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, well, great nice talk. to have you, Will. And we yeah. are finishing. We are finishing your degree in yeah. Good luck one, with the podcast and everything. In one week. <laughs> so yeah, this this will be for the future. Yeah, I'm glad. I can't wait to talk back. <laughs> talk right. to Will in the future. Good luck, mate. <laughs> exactly. Right, I'm going to start recording now. Yeah. Cheers.